Hey peeps, what's going on? It's Josh. I tried to record this before and I'm trying to do it in one take because the quality is oftentimes better than when I put it through Windows Movie Maker and right now I don't have the energy or the patience to figure out my video editing software, although that can make the footage a lot better. These are just notes from the universe, so as long as you could see me and hear me, I feel like the quality is good enough. Um, in the future, I'll probably work on it, though, so I'm going to try and do this in one take. Um, we are finally caught up with the um, calendar that Maggie gave me, and um, what was I going to say? What was I going to say? thought of Maggie and then everything else went away. <laughs> That's not embarrassing at all. Okay. Um. Get it together. Um. <laughs> I really just don't even know what I was going to say. But basically, um, we're caught up. So this is for December 9th. Eh. This calendar is like the dopest thing ever. It's like I literally use it every day. Um, and I think of you, babe, every time. Uh, okay, so just because you can have it all doesn't mean there's something wrong with you until you do. To the contrary, the simple fact that you stand before such infinite possibilities irrefutably means that you are one bad mamma jamma. That's a good thing. The universe. What this means to me... It's, it's in incredibly important that you do everything that you can from where you are and that you visualize and be as positive as you can be, as much as you can be, and also that you forgive yourself for times when you're not because it's a really bad cycle. It's a really bad cycle to get into the habit. No, that's not English. It's a really bad habit to get into the cycle of feeling bad and then being self-deprecating because you feel bad and then feeling bad because you're self-deprecating because you feel bad because you're self-deprecating because you feel bad because you aren't where you want to be yet. What? Because, no. Um, I've done this a lot, and I still do this. Um, last night I stressed myself into a migraine over this inspection from the maintenance department at this apartment, and I'm not even doing anything wrong. Like, there's no reason for me to be this stressed. Um, well, this morning I learned that all of the apartments are being inspected, and it's just a thing that happens. And I, so like... There was no reason for me to even stress. And then I was feeling bad because I was stressing because that impacts the law of attraction. Because I was feeling bad because I was stressing because that, it's a downward spiral. And it's a dangerous one because it adds nothing to your situation. A thing that Maggie reminded me. And um, also Katie. So... That's not the tea I wanted. <laughs> I just grabbed the wrong cup, but this is the tea I want. I'm drinking chai tea. Can you guys see the mug? It's Woodstock. He's the dopest. I've had a life lifelong love affair with the Peanuts gang. Particularly Woodstock and, and Snoopy and Charlie Brown. Anyway, I digress. Um... It's really dangerous to start feeling bad because you're not where you want to be. But in our society, instant gratification is a thing. That's why credit cards exist. Kids, debt is dumb. Don't do it. Um, if you can all, at all help it. But that's besides the point as well. No matter where you are in your journey, whether you're at the beginning or if you're almost to where you want to be, 
or if that's what you think. There is no bad place in the journey because every moment in the journey is the present. And the present, not to be too corny, is a fucking gift. You get to be alive right now in a time and 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 in a time of great turmoil, but also in a time of great privilege for most of us. And that's where the gratitude comes in. No matter where you are, you're at a good place in your journey. Um, and again, I know this sounds kind of over-the-top positive. I'm in what some people would look at as a really hard part of a journey. It's not as hard as other people's parts of their journeys, but it's a hard part for me. And it's still a blessing. And I'm not saying that you can't feel bad because allow yourself to be human. Allow yourself to have those those feelings. Don't just push them away because then you're going to end up self-medicating in some way. Feel the emotions. They're there for a fucking reason. Don't push them away and deny them because they're only going to get stronger. And you can only self-medicate so much. No matter what it is. I know people that self-medicate with exercise. Which is a healthy thing until you overdo it and hurt yourself. There are, there are ways of coping. And then there are... And then there, are, there comes a time where each person has to look at themselves and say, What am I feeling? God, the feels suck. It sucks to have all of these emotions and all of these feelings and all of these thoughts. And you can almost drown in them if you let yourself. Or, and the next video that I make is going to be directly about this, you can do some meditation. Which I've always struggled with meditation, but um, I never quite thought about it in the way that this article talks about. And it's actually from tut.com, and I think Mike wrote it, but I have to double check that. But it's, it's really interesting because meditation isn't about pushing away your feelings or your thoughts. It's about separating yourself from them so you can experience them... Um, Not from a place of emotion, but from a place of logic. And then you can acknowledge them, and then they quiet where they're supposed to. I'm going to try it, but I'm not going to try it on camera because you can't meditate on camera when you know that people are watching you. And But maybe I could. We'll see. The point of it is, um, this is just all over the place. The point of it is, Whatever you're feeling is okay and, and allow yourself that and be kind to yourself. But at the same time, try and remind yourself as I'm trying to do. I'm not sitting here a millionaire saying, hey, I found all this success and all you got to do is be positive, guys. That's not what I'm saying. I'm coming from a place of I have my own problems. You just don't see them because I don't want to put negativity out there. I've got my own issues. And I've got some amazing things in my life, and I choose to focus on the positive most of the time. Well, as much of the time as I can being a human. There are times when I don't do what I know I should do. Um, but when there is great questions, great que when there's uncertainty, there's also infinite possibility. And here's the deal. <clears throat> I've always struggled with the cursed house. I've always had a hard time with them because I am more of a dominant person. And I'm not talking sexy times. I'm talking about I'm a dominant personality and I feel like I know what's good for me. And maybe it's a little bit of ego there. Or maybe it's a lot. I don't know. Um, or maybe it's pride. Or maybe it's control. Because when I was a kid, I didn't feel like I had a lot of control. And so as an adult, I strive for that. I strive to have order and control. But I also revel in chaos at times. Because it's so... I don't think there's a single person 
that couldn't find bliss in letting go of the cursed house. Because there's a certain aspect of hands off. And I know that Christians have the phrase let go and let God. Which I sometimes say let go and let pug. Um, I mean, God spelled backwards is dog. So, not for nothing. <laughs> That's totally sacrilegious. And I, I'm just being playful. Don't mean to offend anyone. I respect everyone's right to believe what they believe. However, it's kind of a funny thing. Um, I truthfully believe that when we let go of the cursed howls, which is what this note to me is all about, when it says, you know, just because you can have it all doesn't mean that there's something wrong until you do, that's kind of like instant gratification. And our society says that we should want instant gratification and credit cards and all of that. Full circle. I said this before, or maybe it was last time I tried to record this. Anyway, um, you don't necessarily get to know when it's going to come through for you. But if you're doing the right things and you're taking action when you feel the universe nudge, you're putting yourself in a good place. And that's important. And that's when the universe, when, when the stars align... And, and, and it's not like winning the lottery. Anybody can do this. When you really put all of your energy into it and you're grateful and you have the right attitude and you're working not only on just taking action when you feel the nudges, but when you're working on being positive and working on um, being fully present. The universe does like speed. And it may not be in any time frame that we can understand or comprehend. And that's okay. It has to be. Because you're not helping yourself by thinking there's something wrong because I'm not where I want to be. And I want to be here and I want to be there and, and I'm not. And so this is, this is not good enough. I have struggled with this. I really have struggled with the cursed house because I have thought, like, I know how things should go and I know how things should be and I know what would work best for me. And I'm always wrong. Every time historically I've been like, I don't want that. I feel strongly that I don't want that. The universe always flips it on me and says, nope, that's exactly what you want though, Josh. And I'm like, what? Why you always got to prove me wrong, though, universe? But that's okay. Because I'm learning. And you are, too. All of us are. If you're not dead, you're learning. And if you're not learning, what's the reason for living? I'm not condoning any self-harm. There's a reason for living, peeps. But, seriously... We're all learning, and that's a good thing. And um, the idea and the reality of infinite possibilities is very exciting to me. And I don't know if that's exciting to you, but when I stand on the precipice of a big change... Precipice? Is that the right word? I can't think. I think that's the right word. If it's not, check me in the comments. Um, when I stand on the edge of that great canyon of change, the Grand Canyon of change, it's, it's, there's a double-edged sword there. There's that, oh God, and this is really scary. And what if, and then there's the other side of, oh my god, this is exciting. What if? You know? So there's two parts of it. And it's what side can you get your mind to um, accept. And for me, my mind's always been able to accept both. 
So I go through this period of anxiety where I'm excited and I'm scared and then I'm excited and then I'm scared and then I'm really excited and then I'm really scared and then I sleep. <laughs> and then I need a nap because I've drained myself. I'm so tired. Um, because you can only keep up anxiety for so long because at the base level, we're all animals and a dog can only maintain their anxiety for so long. <laughs> Not going to happen in one take. So essentially what we're focusing on for this note is you're not there yet. That's okay. Because when you're not there yet, anything can still happen. And the ego in us wants to say what we know best. Or mine does. Or maybe my dominant personality. I don't really know. But I want to say that I know what's best. And I don't. And I don't. I definitely don't. Um, case and example, my life right now. And I'm happier than I have been in many years. I'm more scared than I have been in many years because of change. Change is a scary thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's that double-edged sword. But I'm happier. So, maybe the universe... <laughs> Not maybe. The universe definitely knows more than we do. <clears throat> You don't know all of the good things that you could encounter when the universe takes its path. Because when you lose that control, number one, if you're a person that likes to be in control and likes to be in charge, it's kind of a relief to relax a little bit and not have to be in charge. And not have to try and make everything okay. And that's been my life. Um, always looking around and trying to make other people okay. And always trying to make things stable. And, and make things right. And that's so exhausting. And maybe that's why I love the, the universe so much. Or the idea of the law of attraction. Because... It's my job to actually let go of how things are supposed to happen. And instead, it's my job to follow the universe and follow the nudges and do what I'm feeling urged to do and take action then. That is a relief to me. So it's actually something that I really like about the law of attraction. And particularly, um, levering... Mm, English, please. Leveraging the Universe, which is Mike Dooley's, one of Mike Dooley's books. Um, that's what I enjoy probably the most about it. It's my job to fall back and just let things happen. Although, I don't want to misrepresent myself or Mike here because you have to take action. But in a sense, it feels like things are happening to you in a sense because... You are taking action and you're following the universe's plan to get where you want to go. Um, so yeah. It makes sense in my head, but I don't know if I'm delivering these messages in a way that it comes through for you guys. And that's pretty important to me. So if I say something that you don't agree with or you don't understand... Um, feel free <clears throat> to talk to me about it in the comments because I want this to, yes, these notes help me and the videos help me, but I also, if possible, want to be helping others. So if anything that I say confuses you, please feel free to reach out. And I've got another video that I'm going to make in just a few minutes as soon as I clear the flip. Um, and that's going to be about meditation. So look for that today as well, hopefully, provided I can get through it. Yeah. So that's all I have for you about this note. It was a long one, and I apologize, but 
again, a lot of stuff to talk about and a lot of um, for me, making these videos kind of siphons off some of my, some of my energy in a good way. It's like, um, you go to a dairy farmer and you scoop some cream off the top of the barrel because that's where it's the sweetest. This is me doing that. So, um, wherever you guys are, I hope that you're well. I hope that you know that you're cared about, even if you don't. Even if you don't know where that caring comes from, it exists. I know that no matter how scary things get, your life can change very, very quickly. And what you're going through right now is temporary. And it's all going to be okay even if you don't know how it's going to be okay. It's all going to be okay. Yeah. So, much love. Peep out.